Getting actionable information out of a flight data monitoring or flight operations quality assurance or FOQA program is the main reason why most operators use such a program. There are many FOQA software packages that do a good job of data collection, but are somewhat limited in how they allow the user to extract meaningful and actionable information from that data. One of the reasons third-party services, such as Scaled Analytics Fleet Data Monitoring Service, are so popular is that the data analysis work is outsourced to specialists, making it one less thing for the operator to worry about. The analysts sift through the data and provide the operator with summary reports that can then be used to make business decisions. Operators with their own analysts, however, typically use very expensive, specialized software to perform their data analysis activities. But what many flight data analysts may not know is that Microsoft has added some very powerful capabilities to Excel that can be quite useful for performing interactive data analysis on aircraft flight data. And, because most organizations already own some version of Microsoft Office, there is no added expense to take advantage of these capabilities. Unlike static, predefined report templates, Excel's features such as Power Pivot and Power View allow analysts to perform true interactive analysis of their data to identify trends and quickly share their findings in presentation quality reports. In this short video, I will demonstrate how an analyst can quickly and easily use Power Pivot in Microsoft Excel to analyze some flight data. By the end of the video, you should have a very broad idea of what is possible with this readily available tool. We'll start off with a blank workbook. The first thing we need to do is connect to our data source. Your data source is normally a database or data mart that stores all of the FDM or FOQA data that you've collected. Your software or service vendor can help you determine how to connect to your data source if you need assistance. In this example, I'm going to connect to a Scaled Analytics database. At Scaled Analytics, we use Microsoft SQL Server, so I'm going to click on the Data tab. Then, in the Get External Data section, I select from other sources. Then I'll select the SQL Server option. You can see in the drop-down that there are many other options available. For this demo, I'm going to connect to a demo database residing on a local server, so my connection information is quite simple. In practice, the server is normally at a remote location or in the cloud, so the connection information can get complicated. Again, contact your software or service provider if you need assistance with this step. Once you are connected to the database, you'll have a list of tables available for you to pull data from. In this example, I'm going to keep it simple and just pull data that we have stored in a snapshot table. But you can pull data from multiple tables if your requirements are more complicated. Once I select the table I'm interested in, I click Next and I'm given an opportunity to add some notes about the connection before saving it. This is useful if you plan to reuse the connection, which you may want to do if this is the type of analysis you do regularly. You have a few options as to how to import the data. We will create a pivot table and in a later video a power view report, so for now I'm just going to import the raw contents of the table, so I'll leave the defaults the way they are. Depending on the size of the table and where the database is located, it could take some time to import the data. In this example, we only have about 13,000 rows and the database is local, so you can see it does not take long to import. We now have the data from our database, which is normally locked down, in a familiar looking spreadsheet that we can interact with. Before proceeding, one of the first things I would recommend doing is changing the column names to something more descriptive. Database column names could be cryptic at worst or exercise programmer at best. As an analyst, you may be fine with the column names provided, but if you decide to make a presentation quality report of your findings, you will likely want to have column names that are easy for your audience to understand. Thankfully, that's very easy to do. You just rename the column as you would any other cell in Excel. You can also take this time to clean up any data that you don't want to use. For example, if your system captures a large number of false flights, you can sort on those and delete them. This will prevent them from affecting your tables and charts and the steps to follow. Don't worry, any changes you make in Excel will not be reflected in your main database, so feel free to experiment. Our data here is quite clean though, so I don't really need to go through that step. Now we can finally get into the interesting stuff. I'm going to insert a pivot table by going to the Insert menu pane and clicking the Pivot Table button. To keep things simple, I'm just going to grab all of the data, but if you know what columns you'll need, you can select those at this step. I'm going to create a new worksheet for the pivot table so I can just accept the defaults here. Now once you click OK, you don't have much to look at, but to the right of the page you'll find the tables available to you along with four sections for filters, columns, rows, and values. 
For this example, we're going to take a look at our bank angles during approaches. Because we're using snapshots to review this data rather than events, we can see our bank angles for all approaches, not just those for which an excessive bank angle event was detected. So, to get us started, we're going to grab the parameter field and drag it to the rows area in the lower right of the page. We're interested in looking at the maximum bank angles recorded during approaches, so we'll grab the max field and drag it to the values area. When we drag the max field, it defaults to show us the counts of the max value, or in other words, how many unique entries there are for that parameter. This isn't particularly useful to us, so we're going to change that to average. Hopefully looking at the average max value isn't too confusing. In our system, we can capture different value types such as minimum, maximum, and average among others. So in this example, we're looking at the average of all maximum values captured on approach. This is looking a bit more useful, but I'm only interested in absolute bank angle for approaches. So I'm going to add a filter to allow me to select the events I want to see data for. This is simply done by dragging the event field to the filters area. Now I can see the list of parameters with max values that are recorded on every approach. I can further filter this list so that only the absolute bank angle parameter is visible. Now we see a single value for the average maximum bank angle on approach for all aircraft at all airports. Interesting, but now I want to start digging deeper into this to see if there are any trends, perhaps by aircraft type or airport. I can start digging into the data by adding those filters. By dragging the arrival airport to the rows area, I can get a more detailed breakdown of how my bank angles are at different arrival airports. Adding the aircraft type gives me another layer of visibility. If I don't like the order of these rows, it's quick and easy to change it. Now I'm going to add a bit more information to this view to help with my analysis. In addition to the average maximum bank angle, and again, hopefully this isn't too confusing, I'm also interested in what the minimum and maximum recorded max bank angles were at each airport. So I'm going to add the field max twice more to the values area. Again, the default is count, but I'm going to change them to min and max. I'm also going to change the order of these so that the average value is between the min and max. Now things are getting interesting, and I can use this information to start looking for trends. I can also add more information, such as the arrival weather information, such as visibility and ceiling, see if there's any trends there. For now though, let's assume I've identified some information I want to share with others. There's quite a bit of information here, so I'm going to represent that data in a chart. When I create a chart from the pivot table, all of my grouping and filters are passed into the chart. So if, for example, I only want to see information on Canadian airports, I can quickly update the filter. The interactivity of the data makes this very useful for data analysis, but the quality of the chart also allows for quick deployment of presentation quality reports. If I want to use this chart in a presentation to report my findings, I can update my chart titles and labels quickly and easily, then paste them into my presentation or report. As you can see, the capabilities of PowerPivot are quite powerful. Despite its relatively low cost, our own analysts at Scaled Analytics use Excel fairly often when performing analysis for our own FDM and Focal Service customers. Tools such as PowerPivot assist us in identifying trends on behalf of our customers so we know which information we should provide to them in the form of interactive reports to help them make important operational and business decisions. I hope this video demonstrates how operators utilizing their own in-house analysts can conduct more advanced analysis without a significant investment in capital, if any. I also hope that it demonstrates some of the analysis work our flight data analysts typically do on behalf of our focal service customers. For another slightly more formal method of interactively presenting flight data information, watch our presentation on PowerView in which we go through the same scenario but create an interactive view that is more geared toward a non-technical audience where presentation is slightly more important than data analysis. Thank you for watching. We're always adding new videos such as these so we recommend you subscribe to our channel.
For more information on our FDM focal service or any of our flight data analysis services, please visit us at www.scalenalytics.com or give us a call at 613-903-7147.